Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris from L3D and today I'm going to be taking you for a new tutorial. This one is going to be showing you how to create vector style graphics using the functions within Excel Studio. There are the normal shapes that most people know about, but did you know about the vector drawing tool, which is really great for creating your own unique designs or also tracing around the shapes of the items you want to engrave. Well, if you weren't aware of that, you're in the right place. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So stay tuned and let's get to it. Here we are back on our Xtool Studio workspace as is probably familiar to you all now. And what we're gonna be doing today, as I said, is vector, vector lines, vector tools. I'm gonna to go through all of them, but in particular, it's the vector pen tool that I wanna show you guys because it's really, really useful. So we'll click new project at the top right. As you all know now, this is how we start a new project. It has connected to my Xtool F1 Ultra. That's the machine I'm using. However, I'm only using that to show you the framing of the item everything i show you in this is applicable to every x tool laser so bear that in mind and what i wanted to show you is i've got two really interesting pieces that i'm going to be using in this tutorial now there are probably those of you wondering what a vector even is so a vector is or a vector in terms of images and creation of actual graphics it's a set of mathematical lines and curves and points and using that when you create it, it basically allows you to infinitely increase or decrease that image, that vector image in size and retain all of the actual detail of the image. So if you had like a photograph, for example, that is actually a PNG, a JPEG, and that's made up of lots of little dots. And as you stretch it and make it bigger, those dots get stretched and you lose the, cl the clarity in that image. Whereas a vector itself, that is different. You can make it as big or as small as you want and it will always stay sharp. So hopefully that will educate you a little bit so you understand why they are so valuable to us. Okay, so let me just talk you through the vector tool section. So on the square on the left, well, I guess it will start off as a line depending on what you last clicked. You'll see there is a line function, a rectangle function, circle, polygon and star. So if you put something like that in there, you can obviously draw very basic shapes and the line tool allows you to draw lines and make them longer and you can rotate them. But as you can see, they are limited. They're limited in what they can do. And the reason for that is because they are pretty much predefined shapes. What I will say is when you're putting your shape in, um, you'll see it, the aspect ratio is up and down depending on where you drag it. If you hold shift when you put it in, it will, it will maintain the X and Y aspect ratio and allow it to remain the same size. And finally, we've got a star, same as that, hold shift, put it in. So they're, they're your basic tools that you can do, which they'll get you by a lot of the time. There is also another library in here and all of these that you see in here are vector images. So you can put them in there. And like I said, you can make them as big and small as you want and they'll retain their functionality and the, and the clarity. But you probably have noticed this before and it's the vector tool and it looks like a little ink pen and this is actually a really, really useful tool. And the reason for it is, it allows you to create quite complex shapes with curves or lines. And you can use that to make defined windows around items. So in, in this case, if I wanted to do this drill bit, and I actually wanna do a rust removal. So I wanna use the fiber laser to remove the rust off of it. And I could just draw a rectangle around it, but then the laser is going to be going further than the actual item and wasting a lot of time and potentially damaging the plate underneath. What would be better for us is if we actually drew a really specific shape around it so that the laser only traveled within those lines. That is really important because obviously time is money in a lot of cases and also simplicity is better. So based on what I've said to you there, let's click done there. And we'll, what we're gonna do is we are now going to click the camera icon. So you might not have a camera on your machine. Like I said, it's not critical. This is purely for me to be able to show you in good terms how to draw around it. And you've got something to actually look at. So we have a really rusty horseshoe and I was really lucky to get this. Luckily, I've got a, a lady down the road who has a horse riding school and she very kindly donated a bunch of these to me and I can't wait to actually de-rust it. And just to let you know, I will be doing it in this video. So if you wanna see that, stick around to the end. So let's select our vector tool. So option one, okay. What happens is when you select it and you can select P on the keyboard to do this, 
you'll get a dot that's traveling around and hopefully you can see that in contrast to the black background. Now you click once and it will allow you to start drawing a line in all directions, okay? You click again and you can make it short or long, click again and it will put a point in the ground, almost like a stake in the ground and that line is now locked in and you can do the next line. So as you can see, your first option is to just draw lots of straight lines around your item like that. And to be honest with you, I do that a lot of the time because it's quick to set up and it does the same thing. And if I show you all the way around, I'm gonna just finish it off really quickly. Obviously this isn't detailed at the moment, just to show you what the point of this would be, okay? So once you've clicked the dot that you started on, you've completed your fence. You can right click and select done or in the top right up here, you can select done. And then now what we have, if you look over to the right hand side over here, it says vector, which we've currently got it set to score. If I click engrave, that has now created a very bespoke engraving footprint and we can move it around. And like I said, you can make it bigger or small as you want. But the point of that is we now have a specific and direct shape that goes around our horseshoe. So if I wanted to do an engraving pass or engrave an image, I now have an area which I know I need to engrave within to actually do it. And that's really good for framing as well. So that's the step one, okay? That's the, that's the line feature of it. You can go one step further. And once again, we're gonna click on our pen or we're gonna click P on the, the keyboard. You can also, if I click first, when you click your second line, I want you to click and hold, okay? And what that allows you to do then, you'll see another line, a gray line appears. Hopefully it's clear. You can then make a curved line. So you can really create detailed, curved, accurate lines doing this. And as you see there, I am actually dragging it around. I'm gonna delete this. And then what you can do is it, it automatically gives you a, a preview of the next line if you were to curve it. And if you want a nice tangentric line, which is like a smooth radius all the way through, you can do it. So you would left click on the second point and hold again. And you can see it gives you those options to keep it nice and clear. If you then just click, single click again on the third line, it will create a curve, but then you're back to straight lines again. So, you know, using that is definitively as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. So let's put that into pro, let's put that actually into an example now and we're gonna draw around our horseshoe. What I will say is I am not great at using the curved function, but I, I do do it from time to time. But in this case, we'll start at the bottom here. And what I would say is sometimes to begin with, less is more, so put less points down, okay? So there's our first line. I'm gonna do a second line around here to the left of it and I'm gonna hold the left mouse button. And you can see as I drag the line around, that, that line kind of goes roughly where I want it to be. That's good enough there, okay? I am then gonna drag it to the next point that is naturally within the current arc that it's got, and I'm gonna single click. Then I'm gonna go to the next point, which is here. This could actually be a straight line, but I won't. I'll left click and hold again, and that now allows us to make that into a curved line. Then we're gonna do the same here and you're going to see it's going it's, it's quite wide on this one but we can fix that in a minute we're going to left click and drag our line a bit and that's good we'll do the same we're going to left click and hold just to get a nice curve on that one then the same with this one and we'll go here left click and drag and you can see it's it's going around it in a, in a fairly nice way but now we've really messed this up don't worry just click once and allow it to go like that, okay? Then we're gonna finish this off. I'm gonna finish this off quickly now just to show you. And I'm, and I'm clicking and left click holding every time, okay? And like I said, you might not even need to go into this much detail, but if you're actually really skilled at doing this, you could potentially create some really nice pieces of work and vector images yourself. So there you go, we've, we've done a, a rough outline. And as you can see, it's a bit wonky. If you now, and, and don't click done at this point. If you now hover the line over the, any of your existing lines, you'll see a dot appears. We can add more points. Also, if you hover over an existing line and left click and hold, you can actually draw around, uh, you can actually remove it. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna reposition a lot of these now to try and make them tidier. And you might realize actually, you've got some dots you no longer need. Cause as you start, 
adjusting it and, and moving your handles, and that's what these are, the handles look. As you start doing that, you might realize you have too many of these dots. If you think that, click on a dot and just click delete, okay? That's all you need to do. If you click on a dot, you do get a load of options up here as well. So you can create a sharp corner, perfect symmetry, total asymmetry or angled. So these things will do different things. If I click on them, they're gonna try and make things tidy or nice or smooth. You've also got the option here to simplify it. And you can do auto simplify. And if you click that, it might actually, you see how it's smoothed everything down, look. It's given me a nice smooth horseshoe-ish thing. If I click confirm there, so it's still a bit wonky, but we can then click our existing lines and start to tidy them up a bit. And if I click that one, and then I've clicked on perfect symmetry there, and then move it, you'll see actually, you can get a nice clean line here. And I'm gonna go perfect symmetry again on that one. And you see now we're actually in the territory of having a nice controlled line. And as someone who works in um, mechanical design engineering, tangent lines are basically lines that naturally smooth tangential. So like, so like you've got a natural arc on each curve. It, it means it looks like a nice clean curve. And that's what we want here. And to be honest with you, we're really close here. If I click on that line there, and then once again, I'm gonna go for the um, perfect symmetry, then drag that point down there. Then what I could probably do is add a point in there, drag that in, add another point there, drag that around. And at this point, we'll do the same with this bit here as well, look. So we're gonna make it perfect symmetry. That will give it a bit of a, a headache, but we're gonna put another line in there. Oh, we've really messed this one up now, so let me try and fix this by grabbing the handle and untangling it. There you go. We'll put that there, put that line there like that. And what we have now is a nice, clean, circular profile around our part, and that's really good. I'm gonna click done on that. I'm happy with that. So if I select engrave now, you'll see it covers the item. What we need to do next is frame it on our actual item because cameras are always a bit off and you always should frame first, so let's do that. I've selected frame and I'm hoping you can see on there, the line is going all the way around, if I don't put the camera in the way of it, around the horseshoe, it's not overlapping in any bit. And that tells me, and we'll have a look at the back as well, that tells me that that vector image we've just done is perfect now. So what we'll actually do is we will engrave this and I will record it so you can see it and we can see if we've done it right. We have framed our object, and as you can see, it, it fitted really nicely, I was happy with that. So all I'm gonna do now is just set this to engrave. So I'm gonna click engrave. Uh, I have some rust removal settings I use. Take note of them if you've got an F1 Ultra and you wanna try it. They're the settings on the right there. So we're gonna process it, and let's see how it does. That worked a treat for us. I mean, that's what it looked like if you're curious when we started. That's the end. But that shows you one of the really valuable aspects of vector creation. So there you have it. We have our finished, cleaned horseshoe. And hopefully you realize that was actually pretty spectacular. I hope you've got something out of this tutorial today. I've been going through the vector pen tool, the other shapes as well, but in particular the, the vector pen. And the reason for that is because it allows us to have such detailed shape design and to really, really optimize unique shaped items. There are lots more tutorials in the series, so please hit on the playlist and take a look at it. And if you have liked this video, please like, please comment, and please subscribe to the channel and have an absolutely wonderful day. Take it easy.